The best kind of armature for a stop motion puppet is a ball and socket armature, and I've had good success with this AS standard armature kit. This one ran $120.50. And there are others that run more, like for this one for $233.50 with um, shoulders so you can get some shrugging in there. That's an excellent way to bring your character even more life. But if your budget is more in the $15 range, then this tutorial is for you because we're going to make this armature. This is a wire-based armature using um, epoxy putty to hold it together and to give it bones. So this is what you're shopping for. Your The main thing here is the armature wire, and you do want to get real aluminum armature wire. Don't be tempted by the, uh, the the wire that you're seeing in the hardware store, like steel wire, because it can be next to impossible to animate. Um, epoxy putty, all sorts of different kinds, um, not epoxy glue. It needs to be the, the compound that you mix together to make a, a sort of a clay material that then sets up rock solid. And armature parts. For this one, I'm going to use 632nd size. If you're making a bigger armature, uh, 1024s are good. The idea is this sort of kit here where you're going to get T-nuts, and this is going to go into the foot. You're getting washers and uh, a wing nut, as, uh, as well as the, uh, the screws themselves. And also, you consider what you're going to do for the head. Um, I'm going to make it out of a wooden dowel to start with. This can then have a uh, super sculpey built up on top, or soft plasticine clay. So from your character design, you want to make this symmetrical drawing of your character. It needs to be exactly the same on both sides, at least for the arms. And from this, you're going to uh, build the uh, wire right on top of it. Now, I don't sew, so this guy is actually... His size is based on the size of the costume I'm going to fit him into. This method will work for quadrupeds or any sort of scale, shorter legs, taller legs. First thing you do is just kind of map out where the, uh, the armature is going to run. You're going to have uh, shoulders up there, the arm, going to come down into the wrist. The main armature is just going to come down into the wrist. You can do fingers as well, coming up to the top of the head. And then you're going to have hips. This will come down into the legs, and we'll curve there, and come down into the toes. Going to plot out where the knees will be. And what we're doing here is we're going to work out where, uh, where the bones are going to end up, leaving about half an inch, for a character this size, about half an inch in there. We're going to just kind of plan where the uh, the tie downs are going to go, the T-nuts. I'm going to put one in the heel and then one in the toes. And the collarbone there. And if he's going to have elbows there, elbow there. So I'm just going to start laying out the armature wire, starting at the foot. And I'm just overshooting. This is, uh, this is more sort of working out the length more than precisely how this is going to go first. Um, running from uh, head to toe. Now, since I'm going to put this ball here, the, uh, the end of the wire is actually just going to come up there. I'm just going to make another one. Now some instructions for making a uh, stop motion armature is to twist the wire really tight like this for the whole armature. Um, I'm not doing that here because this kind of weakens the wire. It'll break sooner. This is good for if there's not going to be uh, bones holding it together, like for a tail. So I'm going to uh, now add more wire to the legs. I'm going to double it up again. I'm going to twist just enough to hold it together. I'm even just going to add yet another wire for the legs. So that's five. That's going to be fine. 
And then for the arms, I'm gonna overshoot because I can always trim that down and just work out where this is all going to lie. So now I've got two for the arms, and that is not enough. I'm telling you, two two wires in the arms, almost guaranteed to break, even just during the the puppet making stage. What I'm gonna do is just to get it in place. I'm gonna undo just a little bit. The armature right up to where the arm would come in and then wrap that back around so now the arms are at least at the right height it's okay that's sliding around because I'm gonna fix that with the epoxy putty okay so now I've got the wire part of this done okay again the putty that you want is a mixture of two clay like compounds don't want to mix this whole thing, because you'll never be able to sculpt everything with quality fast enough before this sets up. So I'm just going to take a certain amount and mix it thoroughly. Here's where the biggest mistake in wire armature making I've seen happen is not mixing this enough. Some people will stop at this point, and you can see that it's not mixed properly or fully, and then it's soft. And that's not doing you any good, especially in the feet. You want to work this until all the marbling is gone. All right, so I'm going to start right here in the middle. Already starting to warm up. So I'm going to make the first arm bone. Well, enough uh, wire exposed at the shoulder to be able to get some um, good arm and shoulder animation. Continuing with the arm, I'm going to make the bones as thin as I can. At least half an inch of wire exposed for the elbow. There's uh, enough room in there to bend. Now I'm making a piece for the hip. There's no rhyme or reason to the color here. The uh, three color epoxy putty is all they have at the hardware store today. Continuing with the leg, as with the arm. You want to uh, give some space in there for the knee to bend at the knee without bending every single time in the exact same spot. So for the feet, this is where we put in the T-nuts. I'm going to make one for the heel and one for the toes. If you're making a smaller puppet and you can only get one of these in here, you want it on the toes so that the, uh, the foot can bend at the toes during a walk. You work the, uh, the T-nut into the heel using the wire to bend it into place. I'm going to do the same with the toe. I'm going to uh, use pliers to get it to tighten into place. So since we're going to put epoxy putty over this whole thing, we don't want putty getting into the threads of the T-nut. So putting a little piece of tape on there. A little piece of tape kind of holds, helps to hold the uh, the T-nut in place. Fit that over the toe here, and the thing you want to do is have some of that epoxy putty coming all the way around to the bottom. That holds it into place. Pressing down on it a bit to flatten out the bottom, and then working this in for the heel. So now I've got a tie down at the heel and the foot. There's uh, exposed wire on both ends. Then of course we do the same on the other side. For the fingers, I am twisting up the wire, a very thin armature wire here. I'm just going to use the hand guide. Let's see, we'll start with the thumb and work out from there the length of each finger. And I'm not going to use uh, epoxy on the end here. So if I'm using, if this is going to be clay, the clay will hold the hands together or rubber latex. And so there it is, the full armature. It's not before, using a uh, wooden dowel for the head, which will glue into place with epoxy glue or super glue. And he's ready to be turned into a puppet. And here's where the different methods can be used. Of course, if you're doing clay, just sculpt the clay right onto the puppet. You want to keep it lightweight so it can walk um, or to be able to step up, step on one foot. This puppet here is solid clay and since it's kept under a pound, it can support its own weight on one, with one foot up and can make a nice walk. If you're doing a stop-motion style puppet, you have to use 
a cotton batting cut into strips. This is a bat cotton batting for quilt making. This is pre-wrap. And if your puppet is small enough, you can just use start with pre-wrap and, and that's fine. I like to, uh, if it's a bigger one, use the cotton batting to start the build-up part. Give it some bulk. Lightweight bulk. I've made a roll here, just uh, half width. And then slowly wrap it around. If you go too quick, it's going to bunch up and you're going to get just bunched up parts. And you can actually kind of sculpt as you go with this. Making it tighter where you want it to be thinner. I'm going to use some rubber cement. For the body I'm using full width pre-wrap. And let's say I wanted to have to have a, a little more of a tummy to him. Can add some uh, cotton batting there. Okay, so once you got your puppet done, yeah, this one's not done, but we're going to move ahead anyway to show you how to do the tie down. The screw goes through the platform into the bottom of the foot. Make sure you get it screwed in uh, really tight uh, so that there's no give, no play. And then the final test of a good armature is can it stand up on one foot so that it can walk. So as I mentioned, I don't sew. So for this ball and socket armature, which is being just padded with the cotton, cotton batting, I am using a Ken doll outfit. And putting it on is mainly a matter of just as you would with a doll, uh, getting um, all the cotton batting to uh, fill in all available space. It's got to be tight. Um, if it, Any loose-fitting clothing is going to chatter when you animate because uh, the clothing will be moving as you move the body. And um, also, as you're going, adding additional padding to fill in uh, the anatomy that you want. In this case, he's uh, got something of a tummy. I use the pre-wrap on the uh, ankles and wrists to keep everything in place. And for the eyes, uh, this is Sculpey with a hole poked in the middle, baked and uh, painted. And then these are doll eyes with holes cut into the white part, which can then be covered in clay. And the head, uh, this is a clay head, and um, whatever method you're using for the head, it's got to be on tight. There can't be any give, no chatter. Uh, it's got to move just as you want every frame. And then, of course, when you're done, be sure to have the boss inspect your work. <laughs>